Recording in progress. Those are my favorite words. Uh, we're here tonight with Jason Taylor from The Obsessed. What a fucking great album Gilded Sorrow is, dude. No, thanks, bro. Dude, wow. Um, <laughs> so thanks. I, I greatly appreciate you, you know, taking time out of your night to come hang out and, and chat and and uh Probably. hell yeah. So my question, how'd you hook up with uh the obsessed? Um, so in twenty sixteen or seventeen when they reunited, my band Sierra got the call um to open for them. It's actually it wasn't that simple actually. Uh the Atomic Bitchwax were touring with them and Carmen de Burn, and then I think about five shows in, um, someone in the Atomic Bitchwax broke their arm. So they were scrambling to get a support band. So we were on the same booking agency. And we got a call. We had just done a short run with Weed Eater, like um, four or five Canadian shows. And I was like still in my underwear at home, just got off that that road. And I checked my email. I was like, can you get to Chicago now uh, for the next five weeks? And the drummer we had at the time wasn't sure if he could do it or not. But we we're like, dude, we're showing up at your door. You're going on the road no matter what. And we didn't have the pa paperwork or anything. So uh, we kind of, we just had to like try basically and i was either i'm either going on the tour with the obsessed for five weeks or i'm you know turning around and going home and um the guard was originally not going to let us through because we didn't have the paperwork and all that stuff and i was like please sir like this is our dream please let us go you know what i mean just pulling the pulling on his, the sympathy card or whatever and uh we waited for like an hour and then he came up and he says next next time have your paperwork and then i was like oh thank you sir and like went to shake his hand he wouldn't shake my hand or anything but he let me through and um, then I was on the road with the obsessed, and, and uh, me and Wino hit it off, became good friends. And uh, yeah, we talked about jamming for um, since that tour on. And I, I even like wrote him a note saying, "Hey, if you ever need a guitar player, I know it's like a three piece, but I'm the guy. I love your music. I, I you know, I will always envisioned playing with Wino. So I just kind of put it in his ear, and that five years later, I got the call. So fuck yeah! Well, congratulations. Thank you. It's always cool when you're like, oh, I really like this. I, I want to go and do that. And, and it comes to fruition, you know, yeah, you're like, fuck. Yeah. yeah. Um, so when, when did the writing of Gilded Sorrow start? Um, well, funny enough, daughter of an echo, he, he actually gave that to me the, the original demo of that years ago like way, way before I joined the band, because um, I think that was the first thing that he had written for the, the album. And um, so I knew that song pretty well. Um, but the actual writing, I think it would have been after the second tour. We did the two tours and then there was a 14 day, a two week period where I was just, it was just me and Wino at his house. And he had a, you know, a ton of ideas, but I, I brought over the computer and stuff like that. And we like went deep into demoing and, uh, that was that was cool, man. I, honestly, like in, in my time in the obsessed, that was probably like one of my favorite times. It was just those like two weeks, just like you know, locked in in this uh, place in the Catskills, and just working out all the tunes and stuff, and making the demos for everyone. Hell yeah, that was. Um. So, but what was it? Um. Everything except for Jaylene and Yen sleep was done in that session yeah hell yeah so. well and you know the way it starts with daughter of an echo is like boom you know it just grabs you and you're like okay i absolutely need to stay until the end to yeah. see what else is there you know like cool. and and as a whole like you know me and a uh a buddy of mine we we were on the listening party before it was released and to you know be able to hear it in its entirety we're just sitting there like holy shit dude this is so fucking good yeah those were cool i've never never experienced one of those before i had no idea what we were getting into when we signed up for the listening party or whatever but uh, it was a cool experience like getting to be there with everyone while, as it's happening even if it's just through texting yeah because we've sat with it you know for a year or whatever but everyone else's first response like immediately was a, a really good satisfying way to release an album i think all bands should do that yeah, I, I agree. I think, um, 
you know, to be able to to see the reaction and hear the reaction from the fans as soon as it comes out is is like overwhelming. You know, yeah, or, totally. It was. It was a it was a magical moment. Hell yeah, that's awesome. So, you know, I, I notice a lot talking to uh, musicians that there's there are always these magical moments for lack of a better term, right? Like, like the listening party, like sitting there with Wino for two weeks and, and demoing all the material and, yeah, you know, going through that. Um, is there a stage that you've played where you were like, Ooh, I never thought I would, I would play this place. Um, yeah. Oh, Hellfest was like that for sure. Cause Hellfest was like one of those ones I always wanted to play with my previous band. You know what I mean? So that was that was cool. Um, other ones that stood out, I think definitely like playing in countries where they don't speak the same language is really is a cool trip that I've never experienced before. Well, not not in the same way at least. Um, when we just played Greece, that was an overwhelming uh, show for sure. Just like it was a completely different atmosphere, um, and the the crowd, you know what I mean. They're all they were singing the lyrics more than. English speaking countries, you know what I mean? And yeah. it was, you know, things like that. And I'd always wanted to go to Greece. So that was a trip for me. Um, yeah, there's been lots though. Um, yeah. That's good. So that's cool as shit, right? Like to, to see the different crowds in, in different countries and how they, they actually react. Yeah, you know? totally. Uh, and then even like with the demos, sorry, not the demos, sorry, the singles that had just been released then seeing them sing those words of, you know, from an album that's not even out yet too. That was really cool. Um, and the street people are awesome. Hell yeah. They're uh, like, had like almost like a soccer hooliganism vibe to their, their rowdiness. It was uh, good. Hell, hell yeah. It gets a little rowdy. You're like, yeah, yeah. you know, sure. I'm sure that's, you know, that's super cool. Something I've never, you know, not experienced. Uh, I could only imagine to be, you know, in another country and to have them start mm. singing, you know, something that, that you've written that hasn't really been out there for a while. It's like, Ooh, hell yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Where are you at by the way? Uh, so I live in Louisville, Kentucky. Oh, nice. Cool. And you? Uh, Kitchener, Ontario, some, an hour south of Toronto, Canada. Okay. Yeah. I uh, so I grew up in Detroit, and we used to go over to London. Sure. Yeah. Oh, London, cool. So I'm yeah. an hour north of that hour south of Toronto. Okay, yeah, that's Same. not yeah. probably like two hours away from where I was at ish. That's not too bad. Um, so, do you find it like traveling back and forth to the to the U.S.? Do you find you have a lot of problems at the border, or is it typically pretty easy? It's harder coming home. They uh, they just assume I'm up to no good when I'm in the states or something. They always search my car, uh, but Americans are great. Like at the Buffalo border, they're always like, "Oh, you're a musician." They'll say, "Oh, yeah, I play." And they'll tell me about their guitar collections or like something you know, cool and chill. But coming back home, the Canadians like rip apart everything. So no, it's easy going to the states. Hard coming home as long as you have your paperwork. You, I have to get the visa and all that shit, but uh, yeah. I just do it here and forget about it. So it's good. That's funny. Damn. It, it's funny. You're like, I'm trying to come back home and they're like, no, yeah. we, we want to make sure. Damn. Yeah. I didn't put anything in my butt. I swear. <laughs> <laughs> um. So do you, you guys have a run coming up soon, right? Yep. Yeah. We're going out with a uh, howling giant and uh gauzu. Hell yeah. We good. So the album's out and first tour with the album would be great. And I yep. actually know the Howling Giant guys from when I was in uh, Sierra, too. So it's cool. We played with them a couple times in Europe on this the last European tour as well. They're awesome, man. I love their vibe. Yeah. Like, uh, very like adventure rock meets Prague, but you know, solid dudes and solid players. It's gonna be fun. So I've I've not seen Howling Giant before. Um, one of my buddies is is putting on a uh, a festival in Lexington called legalized lex and howling giant giants headline in it so i'm i'm pretty excited to go check them out yeah be great cool uh, i think the closest you guys are coming is chicago maybe 
Reggie's. Yeah. Yeah. Mike. Mike, I wonder if I could make that trip. Should. If if I could make it work, because uh, I've like everyone, you know, I've got a day job, but I, I've I've got a couple of businesses that I run and then, you know, my wife works and we've got we've right. got kids. So it's like a lot going you, on. Like, you know, Slayer just announced that they're playing a couple of shows. Yeah, I seen that. I didn't dig too deep into it though, but I kinda I always thought it was bullshit. But oh, I I did at first. I was like, there's there's no way, but you know, then you you read the whole situation and when they when they were retiring, they specifically said we're retiring from touring. Uh, right. So then one. Yeah. Just a couple of one offs here and there and I'm like, I'm I'm good with it. Like I've I really did yeah. those dudes. And that's a cool father daughter bonding moment at Slayer. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Like when they, when they were here last, it was Slayer ministry primus and Phil Anselmo and the illegals. Right. Oh, yeah. So after the illegals got off, I take her to the bathroom and she's over here like re respect walk. And I'm like, fuck yeah. Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Oh. So, so we just try to do a lot of shows, um, stay active. Mm-hmm. Cool, uh, man. Great. What, what hopes over the next, uh, like year for the album and the, the band? Do you do you have? Um, what hopes? Just touring as much as possible for me. I just I, I like being on the road and hopefully get some time to write the new one. You know, it's funny when you. It's the same with everyone, but you write an album. It takes however long you've already rehearsed those. Not that I'm sick of them or anything, but you know, they exist. They've been recorded. And then there's a huge wait for the label and everything to get made. So it's fresh to everyone else, but I'm totally ready to write another one now. You know what I mean? So, so yeah, that's it. Just do it again. You know, with the state of the world and everything, you know, Wino always says, he's been saying it forever, but like, especially since I joined the band, but, you know, we got to get one more record in, you know what I mean? Things are going, you know, the world's going to hell in a handbasket, as he says, you know, but now that I said, I'm like, okay, let's just squeeze another one in there too. You know what I mean? Because yeah. it does look that way, you know, things are getting fucking crazy. Now you know, I better find a way to become a permanent resident in the States or I, <laughs> or I might be like locked out from my band. You know what I mean? So nah, no, nah, we're, you know, we're screwed up over here, but but we're never yeah. gonna lock anyone out. We're gonna let everyone in. Well, you might want to keep us Canadians out. Our country's going to going to shit as well. So listen, we we literally let anyone in. It's like, yeah, whatever. We don't care that you've killed thirty people. Come on. I uh, I guess that's true. Yeah. <laughs> the the beauty of America. But you know, I like I'm talking shit like it's a bad place, but I I I love it here. Oh, it's a beautiful place. Yeah. Everywhere. And there's so many, so many different types of places. You know what I mean? Yeah. Such a huge, ge- diverse geography. Yep. Mountains, you know, you've got urban, the rural, literally yep. everything you want. And the, you know, to be in some of the metropolises, you know, LA and, and New York and Detroit and Chicago and, and just to see uh, the mix of people, you know, it's, it's so diverse, especially at shows, right? Yeah, totally. I find that just even like the, just like the Northeast state, even like even something like Maine, I go there, I'm like, oh, this is like the nicest place ever. I could totally live here. But then, you know, then you're in the desert in Joshua Tree or something like that. And the same vibes. Yeah. Of I want to live here, but a completely different vibe altogether. Just, yeah. 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 America's all. Awesome. Yeah, it's super cool. Um, if, and I, I feel like that's why obviously why a lot of people want to come to the U S right. They're like, Oh man, it's, it's so cool here. And as a, a lot of us that are always here are, um, I don't want to say jaded, but you know, you, you kind of get glassy eyed and you're like, what's so great about it. Yeah. You know, um, it's like, like being trying to be a tourist in your your own town there's a lot of 
a lot of opportunity. There's a lot of things there you're not really seeing until you seek them out like like you would if you were just visiting for a couple of days. Yeah, totally. Uh, so where is like your favorite place to, to tour? Um, I mean, Europe is pretty great. I, I've, you know, the vibe there is awesome. Just in the crowds, well, everything about Europe, right. It's for the same reasons. I mean, but there is a special vibe to the American tours as well. Um, I would say my, the best times I've had since joining was probably those first couple of us tours just because the excitement of everything and uh, we were writing an album and all that so um from like personal memories and stuff like the us tours but i mean nothing beats the european hospitality the way they treat bands there is like on a different level yeah um so yeah but uh no i'm really excited to go back on a north american run um we have issues getting into canada so it looks like that's not happening um in, at least in the next 10 years or so uh with the obsessed so i, I, should, I should probably just say u.s tour not north american you know? yeah <laughs> still part of north america yeah yeah that sucked man when we got stopped we thought it was all going to be good but uh it was like i i came across actually um to pick chris up because we had like a three-seater van mm -hmm. so I, I crossed the border into the states just for half an hour to grab him and then we were all going to come back and convoy, but then we got stopped. So it was just like, I hadn't seen the guys in weeks, right? So we like met up. Hey, how's it going? You know, in the parking lot. It's going to be fun. All right, come on. I'll take you to Canada sort of thing. Get stopped at the thing. We get turned around. And I'm just like, see you guys. It's like the saddest, <laughs> the saddest moment ever. I'm just like, okay, there's my band. They're touring, going around. I'm just going back home. So, yeah. Oh, wow. It sucked. Yeah. Uh well, that sucks. Um, hopefully, you guys don't have to wait 10 years to get back in. Yeah. Hold on. My cat is trying to chew my my cord. Stop. <laughs> um, she's she's needy. Oh, nice. Hi. She's like, just love me. I know you're, you're hanging out and doing something, but I'm here too. I'm like, all right. Uh, so do you have any animals? Nope. It's just, just myself. In the basement of our room. All right. That's it it's better than having animals sometimes. I I promise. <laughs> yeah. We've got we've got uh three pit bulls and a cat. Oh nice. And my wife says we should get another one. And I'm like, well, no. No. Like I love them and I don't want to get rid of them, but when they're gone, can we have some time without animals? Right. I grew up with the boxer. It was like <clears throat> the greatest animal ever. They looked mean when you're walking them. So like the droopy, you know, cheeks would go up and they kind of had this snarl. But, you know, when they're lying around the house, they're just big sucks. Yeah. What's it like with pit bulls? Are they as ch chill as the owners say? Or what's your experience with them? I mean, so the, the oldest one is, uh, she'll be 12 in May. She whines a lot. People come in the house and uh, she will, she'll lick you to death, right? There's never any, um, with her, there's never any concern on if she's going to be aggressive or not. Mm -hmm. um, the other two, let's see, the next one is, she's probably about, uh, about a year younger. Um, and she's our grouchy old lady. She's got bad hips. And she, she barks at everyone, but if, you know, you just kind of stare at her hard, she'll pee. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then the youngest one, she's four or five. Uh, she, uh, I think she'll be five this year. She's, she's just like a happy go lucky dog, you know, like mm -hmm. huh, people pet me, love me. Uh, oh, you're you're new, so I'll bark at you for a second, and then ah, can I lay my head in your lap? Right. Um. But yeah, overall they're they're pretty chill. Um. I think I think a lot of that has to do with um how they're raised. Right. Yeah. You know, like with same thing with kids, right? If you raise them to be assholes, they're gonna be assholes. Yeah. 
<laughs> if you're an asshole, your kid's probably an asshole as well. Yeah, for sure. Um, so what are, uh, uh, what was, when you guys started recording the new album, um, uh, what was that process like for you guys? Um, we started with Frank at a studio, um, in, what was that again? In Delaware. And it was a big fancy studio. Um, and you know, probably the nicest studio I've ever been to. And that was cool. They had um, rooms for you in a separate um, building and there was an RV and stuff. We kind of camped out there and uh, they gave the keys to us, at, which was amazing. So we actually were able to jam. I was like, okay, I'm not going to sleep the entire time I'm here. So we were just like, you know, up all night re recording, playing, well, not recording. We were just like playing and stuff like that. So it was a really cool vibe, but we didn't quite get everything done. And then we ended up at Frank's own studio in Maryland. And um, how many songs do we have? I think we had, there was three extra songs or something like that, that didn't end up on the album, but it wasn't quite completed. So then we ended up coming back months later to um, Frank's digital studio again. And we, we just stayed there and we got it all done. So there was like three different spaces, I guess. Like the big studio, Frank's, and then another time at Frank's. Um, so it was chopped up in that sense, but, um, but it was fun, man. Like it was a really good recording experience. Um, I, you know, everything went off without a hitch in a sense. So. Right on. Cool. Well, I, I feel like, you know, if you have the ability to kind of come and go as you please, um, at the studio so you can go in and jam you, it really helps you hash out some of the songs. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't quite that it was still like, we're here for this amount of time. Uh, we just, you know, we just like to play a lot. So we were, you know, jamming in the off time as well. Um, but it was still scheduled. Um, and we were, we were prepared. I'll, I'll give us that. Like we, from the demoing sessions I did with Wino to us all getting together as a band. That's the thing about us, right? We all live in different places. Like I'm in, I'm six hours away. We all meet in Wino. So I'm six hours North. And I think Brian is exactly six hours South. And then Chris is all the way in Florida. So if we get together, not that it's like completely rushed or like a, a problem or anything, but it is like, you know, we're here to do a job. So we get it done in that time. So we're kind of used to that. Um, so like on Monday, I'm going down and uh, we're shooting a music video um, with a, a cool guest, uh, a guest uh, spot from a, an actor. Um, so we're going to go meet, meet him in uh, on Monday. And then we're, all the bands meeting up for about a week. So it'll be, you know, a week of, you know, getting the band back together and then um, jamming and then we're right on the road. Um, so the same thing happened with the recording as well. You know what I mean? It would have been whatever it was at the time. And then we go into the studio. So yeah, we were well rehearsed and we knew what we wanted to do and we got it done um, for the most part. But listening back, there were certain things that we wanted to change. Um, and I think we added a song. No, no, we took away songs. We were like, these ones are, we'll use them on a later date. It didn't quite fit the vibe of Gilda Soro. But it worked, all worked out. I mean, it's two sides of about 16 minutes. And that's like kind of exactly where you want things to be, even yeah. for production, right? You don't want it to be too long. And so I think it's, you know, if you look at any of the albums in the 70s, that's pretty much what it was, right? You know, about 16, 15, 16 minutes aside. And, yeah. Yeah, so, because or, I, a lot of that or, revolves. Or were they longer? And now, now we do that. I don't know. So I, I feel like it, it's kind of ebbed and flowed, right? There was a, a time in the seventies where, where you had the shorter, like thirty to forty minute albums, and then maybe that was like early seventies, and then as you got a little later, they got longer. Or maybe I have it backwards. Yeah, because that was the thing was that when I was in a. a the band before was a bit more progressive. So, you know, like I'm, I'm really into prog rock. So a lot of the guys from the seventies are huge heroes of mine. So when I think of something like Foxtrot by Genesis, you know what I mean? Yeah. That has side two, which has horizons, which is a little classical thing, which is like, you know, two minutes plus the song suffers ready, which is like 24 minutes. 
but now at modern day presses, they're telling you, you have to keep it to like 16 minutes. So I don't know. Never, never mind that last comment. I think I'm, I think I'm wrong in my facts there. I think the seventies, they didn't care. They just put whatever they wanted on there. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, I really think that a lot of it had to do with like band and style of music, you know, cause when you look yeah. at um, a lot of the punk from the seventies, you're looking at minute and a half, two minute songs. Right. So they were a lot shorter and a lot faster. And then, yeah. you know, and that, um, and then you're right. When you get more into the prog stuff, it's longer songs. So you're going to have more, more time on the albums. And I, I that's where I think most of the timing comes from is what's it going to sound like on the vinyl. Yeah. It's the, the size of the grooves and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. But for modern day purposes, we made it a perfectly uh, perfect length of an album. Rock and roll. So, yeah. <laughs> um, and it's, again, it's a great album. Um, so have you, excuse me, <clears throat> have you started like stacking riffs away for the next album? Um, yeah. Yeah. So I have a, you know, a log of, of riffs. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I do. Uh, and with, you know, with, uh, with the songs that you guys decided not to put on the album, it, is there uh, plans to do a lot of bands do like singles and they have a B side? Yeah, I imagine there'll be something like that. We'll, you know, maybe do a split with someone. There's already been a couple, a uh, few talks about that. Um, so we, we have songs for that if that comes up. Right on. But well, hopefully that comes up because, you know, it's always cool to release more music. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, so for you, like what started you, um, what piqued your interest to, to start playing music? Um, well, I got into guitar and my parents um, are, are both from England and uh, they came to Canada. So when they came, they didn't bring their record collection. So I guess they started, you know, they started from scratch um, with CDs so I, I I always remember that this that one kind of like plastic CD tower and it just had a couple of my moms and a couple of my dads. So those albums are really iconic to me. It was like my mom had like, I don't know, Meatloaf and the Phantom of the Opera, like soundtrack, or whatever. And then my dad had ACDC, um, Dirty Deeds, Back in Black. And uh, I'm not sure whose it was, but it was a uh, Rush Permanent Waves. So those albums really, um, and uh, and also if if you want blood by ACDC, like I still remember being a young kid and looking at that CD where he's like stabbed with the guitar, yeah, and not understanding special effects. I was just like so creeped out by that cover. Then on the back, it's like stabbed in a different way, and I remember my head going through like, how did he get stabbed at both sides? It doesn't make any sense. But uh, so those albums were played a lot, um, and then eventually I got a guitar, and um, and then I heard. Black Sabbath by Black Sabbath, actually. Um, there was this long uh, drive to my grandparents' house, also in Canada, through this forest. And then we have a Mennonite community around here. So mm -hmm. in the meet, which is like the Amish or whatever. So in the middle of this forest, there's this Mennonite graveyard. And I always was creeped out by it. You know, at night, it was really foggy and stuff. You, you know, see it through the trees, with the gravestones and all that. And my dad knew, knew about this, like my fear of the place. And that song happened to be on the radio. And it timed out perfectly, like what it is like, oh God, please help me, or whatever. My dad just cranks it and he turns into the graveyard. It was just like a, the creepiest moment ever. And I was like, Dad, Dad, get us out of your problem, basically crying, you know what I mean? And, uh, but you know, when you're a kid and you see the exorcist for the first time and you're hooked, yeah, it scares the shit out of you, but you can't go to sleep, but you're still hooked. I think that that's what that effect was with me with metal you know what i mean yeah. so i think my dad told me that that was ozzy osbourne so i remember i won an ozzy cd I, i'm like probably like 10 at this point i really wanted that and i was searching for that song and i couldn't find it and it wasn't until you know a little bit later i realized that was his first band black sabbath and that started my whole black sabbath trip and then um yeah so that's kind of what got me in those key moments yeah but yeah 
so it was kind of cool it was like you know the first heavy metal song if you want to call it that that really like got me going just by being terrified you know so, trying to get out of a, a graveyard in the middle of a forest well you know if the metal doesn't scare you is it really metal right <laughs> So, okay, Black Sabbath, um, Ozzy or Dio? Ozzy. Yeah, but I do love Dio. I'm not one of those purists. Those those albums are amazing, have an L. But it's like one of those things that's like, you know, for me at least, if I want Sabbath, I'm going to listen to, you know, Ozzy Sabbath. Ozzy. But but when I want to listen to Heaven and Hell, nothing else will satisfy other than Heaven and Hell. Yeah. You know? And I like uh, the, the first few Dio albums at least. And um, yeah, even the time Doug Aldridge was in the band, you know, he was a great player, great time, more for like the live videos that we have of that, that era, but yeah, anything Dio touched was great. Yeah. I'm big. I'm a big fan of Dio. Um, and I was, you know, for a lot of years, I was like Sabbath with Dio is not Sabbath, but I've, right. I've recently. And it's not, though. It's not that, you know what I mean? It it's not Ozzy Sabbath for sure. Yeah. Right. right. Um it, You're it looking for something else there. Yeah. Yeah, it's a it's a very different uh feel, style, aesthetic. Mm -hmm. Um and and it is it is good in its own right. You know, I I I just started really digging into like Dio era Sabbath um uh, a few years ago and I'm like, okay, like I don't know what I was thinking. I should have been listening to this. Mm -hmm. you know a long time ago but i was you know i i, I love rainbow i i love dio as as himself uh um, yeah just he's got a voice like no other for sure uh so is there is there a band that aside from the obsessed that you've wanted to share a stage with that um uh, that you have that you were like, holy shit, like this is this moment was amazing. Um yeah, I mean, there's been a, a, a bunch throughout the years. Um, like even when I was when I was in Sierra, the band before, um, the first real big moment with that was uh playing with Kyle Essa. Cause and then um Philip Cope from Kyle Essa was our uh he started producing our albums, but he ended up being our manager. Like he really took us under his wing. Um, but I was, that all started just for me being a fan, you know what I mean? And the fan of Baroness and the Red Album. When I started looking at the liner notes and I seen that, uh, you know, Baroness was produced by Philip Cope, who was from Kailasa and they all recorded the jam room. It all made sense to me. I was like, okay, that's where I need to be. You know what I mean? So um, that first tour was definitely like that for sure. And then along the way, there was certain things like Sierra, I think it was our last show we ever did. We um we opened for Queensryche out of nowhere, which was you know for a bunch of prog metal nerds. That was that was pretty cool. Um yeah. who else? We, we opened for Captain Beyond. I know it's not the uh, original band by any means, but it's you know the drummer Bobby Caldwell. And to me that's one of the best albums that's ever been recorded and ever will be recorded. It's that first Captain Beyond album. Okay. It's just like music perfected. Um so that was cool. Uh, yeah. One real cool show that we did was the, um, what was it called again? Snowblind Fest in Atlanta, Georgia. And that was um, us, uh, The Obsessed, High and Fire, Pentagram, Mothership, um, and a bunch of other bands. So that was, a oh, Weed Eater was there too. So that was a really cool one. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that that but, sound fucking stacked. Yeah, it was. I'm surprised it wasn't an earthquake or something. Yeah, it was a <laughs> yeah, it was a great concert. Ah, uh, man, God, I'd love to see that bill. Yeah, let's make that happen again. Yeah, that's great. Uh, what what's been your like favorite live favorite band to see live? Favorite band to see live. You know, one of the best shows I ever seen um, was, and I love the band too. Um, but it was a uh, black Black Mountain at this bar in Toronto called the Horseshoe. It was just like one of those nights where everything was just like absolutely perfect. Um, 
just seeing those guys play that stage that I'll always remember that as like one of the best shows. It's just like a completely magical evening. Um, I think they were on like the 10 year anniversary of their first album. That was a really cool show. Um, but yeah, there's so many. Yeah. What's yours? Ooh. So, you know, like you, there's, there's a lot. I, my big band and little band, um, you know, my, probably my top three, uh, live show memories are seeing Black Sabbath on the end tour because it's yeah. the it's the only time I ever saw him, and Ozzy sounded so freaking good. Yeah, uh, I was I was in awe because you know that that's like I grew some of the earliest heavy metal I remember was you know Paranoid and Iron Man and yeah. Like holy shit, um, Iron Maiden what? was another one, um, and that one that one's special because that's that's a memory I share with my uh, little brother who passed away a few years ago. Cool, you, you got to see it together, you mean? Yeah, oh, that's nice. Yeah, we went uh, twenty sixteen or twenty seventeen. I I went up to Detroit, and it was me, my best friend, his wife, and my little brother. So it was, you know, just really cool to share that. That's great, man. Uh, and we always like, you know, Foo Fighters. Uh, they, every time you see them live, I feel like they just always put on a, an amazing live show. Uh, right. And for us, like, that's our, like, family band. If they come around, the whole family piles in, we are for sure going. That's awesome, man. Yeah, I've never seen them before, but. Cool. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, great. Just a great show. Um, so the obsessed is tour in the U S are you guys doing, uh, Europe this year? Yep. We're doing Europe in August. I don't have all the details, but little shows are popping up here and there. We know we're going in August. We're doing, um, Sonic blast has been announced in Portugal and high and fire is one of the bands playing truck fighters, thousand mods, um, which others fire good boys, which is an interesting mix with those bands, but yeah. Mm. <laughs> uh, there's a, there's a band out of Belgium called fire down below. Mm. They are fantastic. Uh, hopefully you guys get to play a show with them. Uh, just, fire down below. Yeah. They, uh, what do they call it? They call it stoner rock mixed with psych and like surf. Okay. Nice. It's, a, it's a good mix and it's, uh, it's real palatable. I say real palatable. It like grabs you by the balls and says, you're going with us. And you're like, okay, that's cool. Cool. Um, what, uh, What's been your favorite uh, festival experience so far? The favorite festival? I mean, Hellfest was cool just in the sense of it was Hellfest. And this is, you know, the grandiosity of it and all that. But for me, it was um, Freak Valley Festival. And I'll explain the difference. It was like when I went to Freak Valley Festival, it was maybe, I don't know, let's say it was a thousand people there compared to the 9,000 or whatever were at the Hellfest stage. But at Freak Valley, it was like almost like going back in time to like what I imagine Woodstock or some shit would be like. You know what I mean? Like it, it, they actually had hippies who were like, you know, just there for like the, the time. They're all dancing around. Everything's colorful. Everything was like nice and just like a beautiful vibe. And I remember uh, we played the show and everyone was in tune. It was great. They were filming it um, and all that. And um, I'm looking out in the sky and like all this is going on. You know, it's heavy. It's like the obsessor playing, but still, it was like you know, a beautiful moment. And there was these two like birds just like dancing around in the sky. And then uh, I talked to Wino about it afterwards too, and he says, "Yeah, I seen that same thing, man. Did you see that? Like the the birds were just dancing. It was just like this, uh, you know, hippy dippy bullshit. But it was like you know, a cool moment. But then flip that to Hellfest, and it's like nine thousand people." Some of them are there for the obsessed, but there's like the black metal dudes and the death metal dudes. It's like all mean. This is like the sea of mean faces. But then up in the sky, 
is just this fucking upside down cross through a chemtrail. <laughs> so <laughs> that that was the difference between the two, you know what I mean? So I gotta say, Freak Valley was much uh, much more pleasant to play, but uh, but yeah, it was it was crazy, man. It was just like Howl Fest and then just chemtrail, and it was like perfectly in an upside down cross. It was like you couldn't have, you know. You can maybe that. Yeah, and then you got a bunch of pissed off black metal kids like <laughs> Yeah. Like, ah oh, shit, come on. And why no even makes makes a comment in, in the middle of the set too? It's like they can poison us from the sky, you know, but they can't take rock and roll from us, or whatever. But yeah, so it's completely uh completely different vibes. But uh yeah, Freak Valley for me, man. That that was such a cool like everyone there was so cool. And then um Yeah. Where, where's that one at? Where's Freak Valley at? Uh, shit, man. My geography's bad. I know the next day we went to the Geiger Museum, so I'm going to say it's in Switzerland. Okay. Or a neighboring country. So okay. Yeah, I'm probably wrong. I'm sorry if I offended everyone, but <laughs> I yeah. think it's Switzerland or Belgium or some shit. I don't know. Whatever. Somewhere over there. Somewhere over there. Yeah. All right. I'll have to look. Go to Freak that. Valley. That's great. Go to Freak Valley. Uh, so. Hellfest is is one of those festivals for me. Like that's a bucket list festival that I'd really like to just go and check out. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I don't know how much it costs, but you get you get a lot for your money, like of all different types. Um, it was cool for me too, actually, because uh, Porcupine Tree played, they, and that was the first um, of their reunion. So I'm a huge fan of that. You know, they threw some good prog metal in there as well. So I think it was like. It was a, a Pucifer played and then the obsessed and then immediately after a uh, porcupine tree played the first show in like 13 years. So I like, I dropped my guitar and then ran like a mile to go see them. Um, and that was really cool. Um, yeah. And then who else? Iron Maiden and then Shiga played later in the evening. So. Wow. Yeah, it was good. Yeah. That- you know, I, I say this obviously from, from being in the States, but I'm like, I, I look at their bill and I feel like they almost always have a, a shit ton of bands that I'm like, man, I would love to see that. I'd love to see that man. And all of them together would be fantastic. Yeah, totally. I, that was my first experience ever being like, even in a crowd that big though. Like I remember I was like, okay, I'm going to go up to see this and like, moving through and like you know you're, you're moving through this crowd trying to get up to the front but then all of a sudden if you don't want to be there if you have, have claustrophobia or anything like that you're, you're really stuck in a crowd like i've never experienced anything like that before it's like fuck okay i need to get <laughs> i don't want to be here for whatever reason i want to be somewhere else it's going to take you like 25 minutes to get through you yeah. know well so, so louder than life uh last year i think hundred and eighty thousand people were there jesus yeah. Yeah. It was insane. And, and the way they have it set up is like, if you made it to the side or all the way up to the rail, mm-hmm. they, they had like a walkway cleared, you know, you, you had, right. ha- had to hop the rail, but they would just, you know, you, you'd have like a free path out and it was, God, it was so insane. Like I had a buddy, uh, they came in town, they, they're like, Hey, Limp Biscuits playing. Let's go see him. And I'm like, cool. Have fun. Right. Like I'll, yeah. I'm going to hang out over here. And, and he's a big dude. He's six, two or six, three and, and probably 200, 280, 290. Oh. He's walking up to the front of the stage, him and another buddy and their wives. And he's leading the way. And while he's walking, someone grabbed his leg and ripped his freaking shoe off. Wow. Like, what the hell are you doing? Jesus. Uh yeah. Sometimes the big crowds aren't so much fun. Yeah. But what uh how big is is Hellfest like as far as uh attendance? Uh man, I don't know. To be honest with you. It's like in the tens of thousands. I'm not sure. I'll get the number wrong. But uh it was definitely the biggest one I played. I mean, we were on the festival stage. Like, it's not like everybody who was there was there. Right. Um, but I, I, from what I heard, it's like nine, nine or so when you when you're playing at that stage. So still a considerable amount. Like, 
you know, it's the sea of heads that, you know, everyone talks about or whatever. It's like, you're looking here or there. It's just people, you know, it's, yeah. it's cool. The shit to look out over, you know, 9,000 people watching the band is like, hell yeah, that's, that's yeah, it's pretty cool. cool. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I can only imagine like, uh, what was it when, <clears throat> like Metallica and Pantera and everyone played that Russian, that Russian concert. I, that was yeah. like 1.7 million. I think they said. Right. That's such a cool video, man. Like the, you know, the classic domination video from Pantera yeah. that shot that it's such an epic, epic piece of music video. Yeah. The, like the sea of people is it's insane. Mm -hmm. I, I couldn't even imagine like you have over a million people there. How the hell do the people in the back even hear what's going on? Yeah. I know. Like it's crazy. Yeah. Uh, what, what show are you looking most forward to this year? Um, I'm looking forward to, we're playing a, a party with COC um, later in the year. That's going to be cool. Hold on. Headbanger's boat? No, but uh, I would love to. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's with that's Lamb of God's cruise or yep. Yeah, yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah, I think uh, was it Lamb of God, Death Clock, uh, Poison the Well, Coc, I Hate God, um, Napalm Death, Soulfly. There's a lot of really good, really good bands on that. Are you playing? All right. So are you going? Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. Have you done a boat tour? Or? Nope. I'm, oh, that'll I'm, be fun, man. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. We, uh, I, I love, you know, like COC and I Hate God, or they, they rank up there for me. And as soon as I saw those two, I was like, I'm not going to miss it. Cool. Uh, I, I talked to uh, Jimmy Bauer last night. And. Oh, yeah really excited to to hear uh to hear some new i hate god they they just started writing awesome yeah like, uh now you guys have played with i hate god right yep a bunch yeah they're really good friends with them uh jimmy and wino are really tight all, right all of them are, but you know yeah he, like what was his sound for his wedding and all that so they're good buds hell yeah yeah, that's I I would pay to see that tour, The Obsessed and I Hate God. All right. Probably quite a few times. Yeah, we we just done one. Oh, that was Europe though. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we'll have to do it over here. Yeah. Yeah. Well the last European tour we had a a week or so in the middle with I Hate God. And then we finished together at Desert Fest, which is also a really good one, by the way. Desert Fest. I got to see um uh, King Buffalo. Um, well, I absolutely love uh, they, King Buffalo was just here with uh resin, I think. Oh, cool, and... yeah. That, the Burden of Restlessness that album when that came out was just like you know, during the middle of COVID or whatever, but just everything about the lyrics was just like, yep, this is like the perfect album for my life right now. And I yeah. listened to like nothing but that for months, and then so it's like a very special album in my, my psyche. Um, so yeah, I'd never seen them live though, so that was cool. Play with them at Desert Fest. It's kind of cool how you know you can listen to a piece of music, whether it be a song or a, a whole album, and and it connects you connect to it um, emotionally, whatever you mm -hmm. know, that emotion is, and you hear it and you remember. Oh, totally. The, the smell of the room, like what you were thinking about. Um, that entire month prior to prior, you know what I mean? Yeah. 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 So it's probably, it's my favorite thing about live music is going and, and when you're actually in the environment and everyone's just enjoying it, whether the, I'm going to say whether the band's good or bad, just because of a band I saw it at louder than life that I'm not a fan of. But it was, I'm I'm not gonna name them, but everyone there was just totally into it, and I I couldn't help but just look around and smile and think, no one gives a shit. 
They don't care yeah. what color you are, what your fucking religion is. They mm. they don't care. We're, right. we're here in the moment, just enjoying this as the human fucking race. Yeah, absolutely, man. I had that moment at, at Hellfest too. It's like um, the whole power metal thing. Like to me, that's so corny beyond belief, right? Like I couldn't even imagine listening to that shit. You know what I mean? I, there's nothing about that that turns me on whatsoever. But when I was there, you know, looking like we had this spot where we could kind of like look above and see the crowd and the band and just seeing, you know, a hundred thousand people or whatever. I can't even remember the name of the band, but they were just so into this band. And this the really cheesy anthemic lyrics and stuff like that, but just seeing like how they were connecting and do that whole thing, I was like, okay, yeah, have it. You know what I mean? Yeah. You guys do, good and you're all having this great time together. It's uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's what it's all about, right? Like you, sure. you don't you go to a you go to a show to forget about all of the bullshit and be there in the moment, and that's uh, it's it's been like that for me as as long as I can remember my first concert was, uh, Michael Jackson. Oh, really? And it was, uh, I say, I always say it's 1984, but it might've been 83. Right. It, he played in Detroit and I was probably seven. Um, uh, and I don't really remember the show, but I remember the feeling of being at the concert and it was, I was enthralled with, the performance. Mm -hmm. So now I'm, I'm always hunting, you know, man, I got to go see that man. I, I, I want to go see a band and, and have that performance. And, and it's right. nice, nice when you find a band that's got great tunes and are super tight on stage and, and, mm -hmm. you know, blow up the outside world. Right. Yeah, absolutely. It's, and it's, it's, it's also, you know, especially great when there's a band without all the production that can do that. You know what I mean? You're in a small room, you know, there's like, you know, maybe even less than 10 people there, but there's just something really magical about this band that is just, you know, does that same thing. You yeah. know what I mean? Yep. Yeah. We, I was actually just at a show a couple of months ago. Um, two like regional bands. One of them is called Fairy Ring. The other is called Blessed. Okay. Oh, awesome. you know, yeah. Very, they're cool. Yeah. Um, uh, super cool. The other one's called Blessed Black. Mm -hmm. And someone was just telling me to listen to them. You're the second person this week who told me to listen to Blessed Black. I gotta check that out. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Yeah, they um they're they're from like the Cincinnati area, and I'll tell you, dude, you if you start from the beginning and listen uh murphy who sings it's the first band he's ever fronted and you can hear him get more comfortable with each like album uh currently they're working on like four volumes of a seasons session so everyone is like three songs mm -hmm. Or so far they've been three songs and it's like they wrote one and recorded in the fall. Then they wrote and recorded in the winter mm -hmm. and then they'll do one in the spring and one in the summer. And holy shit, it's so good. That's great. Like. I have to check that out. Yeah, I, I can't get over it. Like I, I message them all the time. I'm just like, holy shit, dude. Why aren't you guys bigger than what you are? But, right. you know. Yeah, it's always crazy that when you when you're so passionate about a band and they just don't have the recognition they deserve. You know what I mean? Yeah. Have you ever listened to the band Errata? Mm -mm. No. Yeah, that to me is criminal. It's like, uh, sorry, something just happened on my phone. Yeah, Errata, Errata, Croca too on my shirt here. Uh, just like world class. You know what I mean? And it's you know, it's great for you because you get to enjoy them for you know, whatever it is, $10 a ticket with nobody bothering you in front of you. But it's like, how aren't you playing for fucking millions of people a year, you know? Yeah. Yeah. yeah and that's, you know, I, I think when you see those bands, you're like, man, I, I really hope that, um, that you guys just have all the success in the fucking world. Yeah. 
because the, the song structure's there. And then like literally to see Fairy Ring and Blessed Black on the same bill play together was mm -hmm. like, both of them are just, they're so tight. Great, great live bands. Um, they're actually both going to play that that festival in Lexington. Oh, cool. I think that'll be, God, that'll be so freaking awesome. Right on. Can't get here soon enough. You should you should come down for it. Yeah. What's it called again? It's called Legalize Lex. Legalize Lex. All right, cool. Yeah, you can crash with me. I'll I'll drive. All right, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's just one day, so it'll be quick. Uh, other than that, I don't think I have any other questions, man. Cool. Well, this is my, uh, my first interview with the obsessed. So rock and roll, <laughs> Jason. Thank you. I, I greatly appreciate you taking time out of your night to come hang out and chat music and, you know, to, to hear about your experiences and, and the recording of Gilded Sario. I, Man, I, I hope that thing sells a lot. It's such a, a such a good, solid album. And I think you really add a you know a a fullness to to the band. Uh thanks, man. To an already great band, you know? Yeah. And that's the thing, man. I, I was such a big fan of the obsessed, you know. I was like, I just don't want to fuck with anything. I just want to be a part of it, you know. And it's um I'm I'm glad it's people like it so hell yeah i think a lot of people will all right cool. have yourself a great night i'll Bro. see you on the road all right thanks a lot man yep see ya <laughs>